Billy, it's time you learned about money and the importance of Bitcoin. B Billy, Billy, no! What's going on, guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today is Sunday. Hope you're having an awesome weekend wherever you are. Having a look at the charts, we are seeing some mild red across the board. And I know what you're saying to yourself. Today's St. Patrick's Day. Where's all the green? Well, I would have wore green today, but, you know, green screen, green shirt, doesn't really work. But that being said, in all sincerity, if you are celebrating today, please be safe. Um, not just with, you know, the drinking, but also potentially with the, you know, the trading, okay? Don't be making some crazy trades, you know, on the sauce you're going to regret in the morning, okay? But in all sincerity, let's have a look at what's going on. Bitcoin dominance actually has fallen down 0.1%, interestingly enough. Market cap, $139 billion. Now, you can see Bitcoin right here is over $4,000. However, um, if we look over at Coinbase, it's still sitting around 3,973, but I guess the global average is above 4,000, so that's pretty good news. If we have a look at the biggest gainers of the day, or Mias coin, I have never heard of this coin in my entire life. We also have Tezos, Lisk, BitTorrent, finally sort of, you know, getting some steam again, Ravencoin, Maximine, Qtum, GX, Augur, and KuCoin shares as well, all up today, and actually there's quite a few up in green as well. Now, getting back to the Bitcoin chart, we were a little concerned about this uh, pattern, you know how we had this blast off, and it was starting to sort of mimic it right here and here. We're all good. It didn't do that. In fact, it found support at this three thousand nine hundred and forty-three dollar uh, level, which was sort of playing a little bit of previous resistance back here in February when we were trying to break out. Right. So, having a look at this, it looks like we're stuck in this channel right now. To be bullish, we'd have to obviously clearly break through this 4,037 and then finally through the 4,151. Um, worst case scenario, you know, we could plummet maybe down to this $3,764 mark, but I think that's where we'll stop. And if we do wick down, I think we'll find ourselves, you know, back above that level again. Just my opinion, guys, but always be safe. But there's really not too much to talk about. I mean, we do have Bitcoin's daily exchange volume is booming, as Kevin Rook points out. Volume has increased by 150% in the last five months. Average daily volume hasn't been this high since January of 2018. Only nine days in the last 12 months had 10 billion plus in volume. Five of those have been in March. Actually, you can just, you don't need to pull this up on trading view you could just go look at the charts right here on coin market cap and looking at the volume that we had over friday it's uh i just had it right there 11 there you go so we had 11 billion dollars okay and this was uh well actually technically this was saturday i guess it depends but then if we come back here the last time that we saw levels that high uh was pretty much i don't know why i can't seem to get my thing on it but it was back around here um yeah i can't seem to find it but it was quite a while ago, guys. In other words, we haven't seen volume like this in a while. So definitely something to look at positively. Now, if you guys are familiar with the uh, Crypto Fear and Greed Index, so basically, obviously, the more greedy, the more chance of a correction, and the less greedy, the more chance of a pump, to kind of just put it in you know really easy terms. So we are starting to get somewhat high on here. We're at 58, so we're not in like super greedy territory yet, but just be careful, you know, if we do continue to have a lot of, you know, positivity and 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 prices keep going up, then we will probably have some sort of a, you know, small correction. So, don't get super super excited, but um, you know, no more than usual <laughs> as as is. Um, now I want to point out this really crazy chart that somebody was pointing out <clears throat> talking about fractals, right? And it's almost like if you flip the chart it could mirror itself, right? So talking about uh, if we if we were to potentially take a little bit of a dip, they're saying that we would take it down sort of to this $3,600 level. But do you see how it's sort of a mirror? Like you have this pattern and then that's upside down and then, you know, this and now it's upside down and then this box pattern, now it's upside down. And then we had this V and we plummeted. So the question is, will we have the V and then shoot up, right? So then it would just basically turn it into a gigantic Bart Simpson head upside down, right? Just something to keep in mind. I don't know who did this. Um, this was just a chart that was floating around. I will drop the link, but like I said, I don't really know who to give credit for this chart. But yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's speculative. Doesn't mean anything, but hey, you know, it's always fun to look at these charts and make guesses. Now, one uh, coin, you know, we have been talking about altcoin season. Well, Ethereum or alt season, you know, whatever. So Ethereum is the number two. Well, it's the number one altcoin, right? So Don Alt says, when I open my swing 
for ETH long at 100 a month ago, I targeted 200. My macro view is still the same, expecting far higher prices. I've been bearish for the last three weeks. That has changed with recent PA and this SR flip. If I get stopped out, I'll try again lower. So it's actually pretty positive. I've seen a lot of people excited for Litecoin, Don Alt in particular, he's excited for Ethereum. But anyway, getting back to sort of Bitcoin and talking about the dominance, the dominance has pulled back. We just spoke about it, but you can see it right here. It's gone down from 52.65 to 50.65. And I think it was, I don't remember what it just was, what I said before, a 50 point, uh, Seven. All right. Close enough. So anyway, they say when the market is greedy, the dominance of Bitcoin, considered a crypto safe haven, tends to shrink while investment in riskier altcoins grows, right? Not all the data is positive, however. The amount of Bitcoin-related Twitter activity and Google trends both indicate shrinking interest in the cryptocurrency. Now, I don't know necessarily with the Google trend search, but you ever think that maybe just you know, especially in the US, I mean, most people sort of know what Bitcoin is at this point. I, I would say like the majority of people, if you said, have you ever heard of Bitcoin? They'd probably go, yeah, I've heard of it, even though if they don't know what it is, you know what I mean? So I don't know that you got to take that with a, with a grain of salt as is. But they do say that they have been diminishing approximately 20,000 tweets on average per day talking about Bitcoin. Google trends for Bitcoin have shrunk from 75 to 50 over the last 90 days. And um but they said that interest over time for blockchain has been going up from 58 to 74. So it's still a good thing, right? It's still something to keep in mind, some positive stuff. Now, before we get on, I, I, I have more to talk about, but I just wanted to put this early in the video. I know sometimes I lose some of you guys, like, you know, towards the end of the video. Did you see um, what they're doing now? Like, you know, like the whole Mark of the Beast thing, right? Well, these people are actually putting these like NFTs in their body and they can program them. And some of them are even using them for, for like Bitcoin. Um, NFC enabled microchip implant. Yo, just watch. It's housed in glass about the size of a grain of rice. And so it fits inside a hollow 14 gauge needle. The needle goes in, the implant gets pumped out, the needle comes back out. It hurts about as much as giving blood or getting a piercing, and it gets injected most often between the thumb and index finger. And it's secured by this blockchain. That's the implanter's joke. <laughs> Some attendees had programmed their chips to open RFID safes and doors. All right, so long story short, basically, she ends up using it for, like, a Bitcoin wallet, which is really crazy. I forget where it is. I think it's back here somewhere. Yeah users to program the chip to act as an authenticator key with this i should be so i don't know my question is would you implant a chip into your hand so that you would be like they no one could access your uh you know private keys unless they had your hand <laughs> Let me know what you guys think about that. Obviously, I'm not going to play the whole video here, but you get the point. Pretty crazy stuff. I almost knew this was coming. We knew this was coming, but it's officially here. People are putting chips in their hands. So, okay, off topic, off topic. Something that some people have brought up recently. Um, I don't know why it's getting, maybe because people are getting excited for the 2020 election, which is still quite a while away uh, in the US. But you have Andrew, no, nope, just lost my, just lost it. Here we go. So, this was way, way back in uh, you know July of last year, but he said, huge news, my campaign can now accept Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other cryptocurrencies. And this is Andrew Yang, and he's running for US presidential candidate. So a lot of people were excited about this, but this isn't really new news. I mean, we brought this up a while ago. The one cool thing I can I, that I did uh, find was that this was actually from December 7th, 2013. And uh, he wrote, I sense the Bitcoin price correction will make some fellows nervous. And this was based on an article that said meltdown, Bitcoin crashes to $576. Imagine that. Oh, the cycles, they just repeat themselves. But here you go. Sean says position on Bitcoin. And he says the blockchain has a wealth of potential, could make many things more secure, transparent, and efficient. So that's pretty cool. But I mean, outside of this, this happened years ago. So it's not really like brand new news. But I guess since he's running for president, people are excited and bringing it up again. Um, and we talked about this a while ago. So moving beyond that, some pretty cool news that's happening is publicly traded US-based company Riot Blockchain has filed with the SEC to launch a new regulated cryptocurrency exchange called Riot X in the US by the end of Q2 2019. So basically their API is planned to among other functions serve as a security enhancement by tracking user location in order to prevent fraudulent use of the service. 
That's interesting. So for example, improper use would include the use of the exchange in U.S. member states where it's not allowed. And in this case, it's more precisely Wyoming and Hawaii. What? Wait, wait, wait. This is this is allowed in New York? I must be reading this wrong. So anyway, they say Riot users would be allowed to create accounts connected to accredited banking institutions in the U.S. and transfer and hold both fiat and cryptocurrencies. So all right, there you go, guys. So that's pretty good news, I'd say. Now, I also want to talk about the negative. There's always somebody saying something negative. Well, this time we have William Goatsman, and he is a Yale professor, and he went on to have his you know, take on Bitcoin, where he says there are a few basic things any currency has to fulfill. It has to be a store of value. It has to be a method of transferring value with Bitcoin because it fluctuates so much. It's not a particularly good store of value. You could put in $100 today and it could be worth $25 two weeks from now, or it could be worth $300 from two weeks from now, just saying. But until it overcomes that particular feature, it's not a great currency. Well, the other thing I want to point out is the market cap is stupid, stupid low, okay? When you look at the market cap of Bitcoin being around, I don't what is it today? 60, um, 71, $71.1 billion, okay? <clears throat> and then we come over here and have a look at, for example, this chart, which I'm sure you guys have seen this before. This is from Market Watch, and this is like all the money in the world. Now, I want you to keep in mind, too, this chart was made when Bitcoin was still 100 uh, billion market cap, whereas now it's clearly only 71. So yeah, I mean, look at this. This is cryptocurrency right here. Look at these are the biggest companies in the world, 50 richest people. This is gold right here. Uh, you know, stocks. Okay. We go down here to global money supply, global debt, global real estate derivatives, which forget about it. We just got to keep going. Yeah. So guys, I think as we as the market cap grows and as the demand for Bitcoin grows, it won't fluctuate as much. Clearly, it's volatile now because it's so young in its infancy. So I just wanted to point that out. But he did have some nice things to say. He wasn't all doom and gloom. Another interesting aspect, according to his theories on Bitcoin, is that Bitcoin is a return to the original way of doing business. Before the invention of paper money and coins, people traded on ledgers, assigning values to their goods and services rather than exchanging actual money. So he says that this is similar to blockchain. He says in a sense, we're going back to the time before we had anonymous money transferable by physical processes. That is exciting because each method of storing and transferring value solves different kinds of problems. So I'll drop this chart below if you guys haven't seen it yet. I mean, it's been floating around for a while. It's not a new chart, but it does put into perspective. I mean, cryptocurrency is just so unbelievably small. It's ridiculous. I mean, even if Bitcoin could get to the market cap of gold, that would make it would be a very expensive Bitcoin. I think it'd be over 300K at that point. So yeah, definitely. Now, moving on to some quick speculation, okay? So is Cardano gonna be the next coin or at least one of the next coins that gets added to Coinbase? Now, we do know that the Coinbase effect has kind of lost its luster, but this is still some speculation because if we come over here and look at what Cardano's been doing, it's just been going on a beautiful, beautiful uptrend you know, for, uh, you know, quite some time now. And if we look at this announcement that had came out from Coinbase way back last year, July 13 of 2018, they said, we're exploring the addition of several new assets. And these were the five that they offered. They had ADA, you know, Cardano, Basic Attention Token, Stellar, Zcash, and Zero X. Now, if we currently go over to what they have listed, you can see not only have they listed four out of those five, but they've also listed plenty of these other ones as well. A lot of them are connected to the digital currency group, which we've spoke about before, but still they have not listed Cardano. So considering that Cardano was one of the first five they originally said that they were thinking about listing, it does make you wonder, I mean, is Cardano getting closer to getting listed on Coinbase? So, I mean, with this recent sort of price increase, you can see right here, we kind of bottomed out around March 4th. Um, and we've just been going up and up and up and up since. So yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Speculation, but it, could it be the next coin that gets added? I just wanted to bring that up because it seems like it could potentially be. So we'll have to, you know, it may not, but just keep your eyes on it. All right. Also, this guy did a really cool nano speed test, iPhone to iPhone. And you know, a lot of people don't really have, they've never really seen how fast nano is. So look, this is him sending an email. Okay. Okay. So that took, uh, you know, six seconds. So now he goes on to send a text message to see how fast that sends. 
eight seconds. Now, let's see how fast Nano is in comparison. Now, obviously, he's doing this with a, a fingerprint identification thing, so just give him a second. But, you know, for those of you who don't know how fast Nano really is, check this out. So you could just see how fast this is going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I mean, it's almost so fast. It's, 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 it's like literally just over a second, like just over a second. So pretty incredible demonstration. Uh, yeah. So thank you to uh, Ju Hansen for putting this out. Very cool demonstration, my friend. Now, also talking about Singularity Net, a recent report revealed that Chinese insurance giant Ping An has entered into a partnership with them. The partnership was announced via a recent Medium post. So they said Ping An is recognized as the world's most valuable insurance brand and with an impressive 170 million customers and 459 million internet users, it ranked as the third largest global finance service company in 2018. So according to the press release, the two entities will initially start working together on optical character recognition, computer vision, and model training. Eventually, the partnership is expected to expand and beyond the blockchain industry to others. So that's very good news. Also, um, now, but maybe by the time you're watching this video, it might be too late, but if you watch this pretty quick uh, to the time when the video comes out, um, they say that they're gonna have Mo Dong from Seller Network and they're gonna be doing a live video AMA on March 18th at 3 p.m. UTC, 8 a.m. PST. Join us to meet our team wondering how to Seller Network become the leading layer two solution. Make sure to tune in. Also, um, you know, worst case scenario, if you miss it, you can definitely check this out, obviously link below. Also speaking of a coin that has recently, or a token that's recently been listed on exchanges, we do have Ergo. So Ergo is listed at Bitmax and actually according to this, it should already be trading as of a few hours. So you guys can definitely check that out. Um, Bitmax is not particularly US friendly, which I'm pretty bummed about. But it's definitely been taking off as a pretty popular exchange. So for you know all of my friends non-US, well, there you go. Also, let's talk about Rune Christensen, the CEO and founder of MakerDAO. MakerDAO has been getting a lot of popularity lately. It's, I've heard a lot of people talking about it. So apparently he came to the US and he visited the MIT Bitcoin Expo, and then he did a little bit of an interview. And he says that the multi-collateral die release will have two major features, but the most important is the addition of other types of collateral. So to quote him, he says, the first one is that it can support multiple collateral types. This, of course, means ERC-20 tokens. Obviously, it also means Bitcoin through WBTC, which we've spoke about before, a range of cross-chain assets that are emerging now. Also, there will be other stable coins, centralized stable coins that are already existing on the Ethereum blockchain. But here's the kicker, most importantly, security tokens. So that is the big news from Rune Christensen. All right. So, oh, I was going to show you guys this chart. Uh, wow, it's already breaking out. Okay, I was going to show you that I thought Decentraland was going to break out, and it's already breaking out, so I'm sorry. My bad. But, hey, um, we could talk about this chart from uh, this guy, Cryptomaniac. Now, I, guys, please, I just, I'm just i not making fun of anyone. I'm not making fun of XRP at all. I, I totally get its use case. But it, can anybody really – can you take this chart seriously? I mean, look at this. So this guy says um, – Please just can we just entertain this for a second? So basically, he's saying that according to this, by April 3rd, April 3rd, he's saying that we could have a boom all the way up to 172. Like, is this a joke or is this serious? All right. Well, anyway, just to entertain this, I want to show you how funny this is. So, uh, okay. So let's XRP, right? So let's just take this right now. So he's saying it's going to go to $172. Okay. So $172 multiplied by the current, um, circulating supply right now would be four, one, four, three, two, one, four, one, nine, three, one. Right. So that would put this at seven point one trillion dollars. So that means that by the by by the third day of April, uh, XRP is gonna basically be the market cap of gold. I mean, I don't know. I can't. Is this a joke? Like, I don't know. Maybe he's just being funny. But just thought I'd bring that up and entertain it. So also, just want to talk one more thing before we go. So you have this woman. I I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Valerie 
sex Hispanic. I don't know, but they call her the crypto czar essentially. So she was talking about stable coins and she was talking about different types of stable coins. She said that one are the types that are tied to real world assets like gold or real estate. The other ones are the ones that are tied to fiat currency, but she says that there's a third type. And this is one that has financial mechanisms that are used to keep the price stable. So she says, I've seen stable coins that purport to control price through some kind of pricing mechanism, whether it's tied to the issuance, creation, and redemption of another type of digital asset tied to it, or whether it is controlled through supply and demand in some way to keep the price within a certain band. So she says that since a central party controls the price fluctuation over time, that 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 this kind of stablecoin might be getting into the land of securities, right? According to her, if buyers are promised that somebody else will be holding or guaranteeing a profit or controlling the price, the token could be a security. So is this just another issue that we're going to have with uh, Tether? Um, because, you know, coming over to their website, just give me a second here, they have, uh, you know, updated this. Why is this taking so long? I Oh, did I leave my VPN on? <laughs> Oops. Uh, yeah. So anyway, look, at, at, see, so then they were saying here may include assets receivables from loans made by tether to third parties, which may include affiliate, et cetera. So yeah, there you go. I mean, is, is that now going to make it a security, but who cares about that? Let's end on a good note. So before we go, check out this kid on Reddit. He's a 16 year old. He says, I'm pretty limited in what I can do. My parents won't get, won't let me use, the, uh, won't sign up for a Coinbase account and let me use them. I have no idea how to get into crypto. So a bunch of people start telling him how to, you know, get involved, make a wallet. We'll send you some money. So finally, uh, down here, this guy says, if you download the IOTA Trinity wallet, generate a receive address and paste it, I'll send you $50. So the kid actually does it. He posts it. The dude sends him $50. He says, you're a God. Holy moly. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So that is how easy it is to get involved in crypto. You don't have to go see a broker. You don't have to go jump through some hoops, right? All you got to do is just ask some friendly people on Reddit and you get 50 bucks worth of IOTA. There you go, kid. Welcome to the crypto sphere. Also, shout out to whoever this is that uh, was spotted at South by Southwest, uh, Sport and Dash. So there you guys go. If you guys are feeling friendly enough to uh, uh, tip her, there you go. No idea who it is, but be a kind gesture because it's all about spreading the love in crypto, right? So that being said, guys, before we go, thank you so much again to everyone that's supporting the channel, everyone that's been, uh, you know, hooking me up with basic attention token tips. You guys freaking rock. Seriously, if you haven't downloaded Brave Browser, you can use my link. You get $5 of tokens uh, to use on the platform. Also, friendly reminder, guys, if you were waiting to pick up your ledgers because they're shipping next week, well, they're still pushed back. They're in high demand. So if you're trying to get a Ledger Nano X, um, it says orders placed today will be shipped early April. So yeah, um, I'll see if I can get some for like a giveaway or something, but I don't know, you know, if I reach out to the, to the guys, but it looks like they're on back order. So just wanted to point that out. And that is it for me today. I hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. It's Sunday. Relax. Go outside. It's a beautiful day in New York, but it's chilly, but it's nice and sunny. So maybe I'll find something to do, but um, yeah, just Honestly, I can't wait for real spring and crypto spring in general. I'm tired of winters. Just no more winters, okay? So that being said, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. You guys rock. You're the reason that I do this every single day. My name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.